we do have a staff report um, from Mr. Bailey on the 2015-16 uh, biennial budget. Mr. Bailey, welcome. Thank you. So the purpose of my uh, comments this evening are to uh, elaborate a little bit about the book that you received this evening and, um, and help sort of prepare us for the journey that's ahead. So that's, my, that's my goal. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I've organized these comments uh, to kind of walk chronologically through um, the first uh, introductory sections of, of the budget book that you have in front of you and to pro again provide that as a bit of context. Um, I'll uh, hit a few points the mayor has already uh, addressed but won't belabor them. Uh, certainly this has been a journey that we started about a year ago and uh, had several uh, key stops along the way and, uh, and so this slide is intended to remind us of that. The total budget is 617 million uh, just under dollars and a slight decrease from the last uh, or the current biennium. Um, the general fund budget is uh, 166 million dollars. Again, this is, these are for two year periods of time. The city of Redmond budgets uh, for two years at a time and uh, that represents uh, just under a 4% increase over the current biennium. So this is the outline of the book that you've been given. Um, the, the mayor ad addressed the message uh, component this evening. Um, I'm gonna spend a few moments walking through some of the highlights, uh, again, some of the uh, insights about uh, w what we discovered as we put the budget together. And, um, and uh, the budget then goes on to talk about some of the uh, uh, elements at, at a glance. Again, I'll, I'll uh, touch on those briefly a little later on. We do budget by priorities, so each of the six budget priorities plus a capital section is uh, covered by the budget. Um, and, uh, and within each of the priorities uh, that are covered by the budget, um, each includes, uh, like it has in the past, strategies, offers, and, and recommendations from the mayor for um, appropriations that would uh, pursue the priority uh, the, that the community identified. As I mentioned, there is a capital investment plan uh, in the budget. It's actually a fair amount of the, uh, of the volume of the budget. And, uh, and so we'll be going through that as well. And Council Member Stillen is gonna talk to us a little bit about schedule here in, in just a minute. Um, at the end of all of that is where you will indeed begin to find some of the accounting or financial elements. Uh, we, we do have each of the funds of the city or separate accounts where we manage our various affairs. Um, have summarized uh, at the back of the budget in the budget by fund section and then there's some supplemental information such as uh, employees by department and things of that nature. Once again this budget uh, is really uh, based on a foundation of the long-range financial strategy that the council first created in 2005 and has revised uh, biennially since then. Uh, that is part of the journey we spent already earlier this year, uh, late last year even, um, working on, on setting that foundation and refreshing it. Uh, Mayor addressed the price of government, the capital investment strategy, and, and, and the resulting uh, budget that you've been presented with in, in the f uh, capital facilities element as well. And, uh, and really, we attempted to pull the requisite elements together in the context of a six-year sort of look forward uh, to create a little bit more uh, a texture about uh, the thinking that needs to go into uh, maintaining the city's services and facilities uh, a little further out than just a two-year budget. The mayor addressed the uh, price of government uh, uh, briefly and, and talked a lot about the range of the price and uh, this chart's a little bit more involved because uh, with the uh, lower line, of course, council's familiar with that is the uh, level of taxation. Uh, the next line up, the blue line, includes taxes plus fees and charges and then the red line uh, includes all the other kinds of revenues the city gets such as grants and investment earnings and things of that nature. Um, let me flip back here just a second. You'll notice there's a dotted line uh, that begins in 2013 and trails into the future. Um, and, uh, and, and there's a, a, you know, the red line, the price of government line is, is the big red line for all city revenues just above that. Well, the dotted line is where we were forecasting the price uh, before some of the uh, preliminary actual th uh, 2013 data came in. Um, some of, the, I say preliminary because we just have the revenue side of that. We, of course, know by now that what the revenues turned out to be in 2013, we still don't have information about community income. And as you recall, this is a ratio of total city revenues 
uh, over community income, which is made up of per capita income times population. And so we, waiting on per capita income numbers uh, causes this to be preliminary. So what are the differences uh, in between what we forecast a year ago and what we're seeing now? Uh, in this chart, you can see that uh, the, the, roughly it's a 5 percent difference and uh, higher in the forecast, or higher in, uh, than forecast, I should say, uh, are such revenues as uh, real estate excise tax, uh, some of the building permit activity, utility revenue, and grants were about double what we anticipated. Uh, lower than the forecast were utility taxes, interests, and earnings, and, uh, and fines co collected for uh, uh, offenses of the municipal code that the law enforcement enforces. You can see that the ones that were lowered are predominantly general fund type revenues. So even though our price of government improved a bit, it really didn't take any pressure off that $4 million deficit that the mayor talked about that we were forecasting um, for most of this, of this past year that we've talked about a bit before. Next in your budget book, you'll see uh, a bit of a high-level discussion about the capital um, investment strategy. And I know that you had a briefing a few months ago, I believe now, with the uh, report card, a, a progress report on the capital investment strategy. And uh, at that time, we learned that uh, in the last two years, we had accomplished 27 projects, almost $74 million. The strategy goes on to talk about the next 15 years and, of course, um, you know, forecasts uh, a significant number of projects uh, with a lot of capital investment to potential uh, to continue to, to support the kinds of facilities and programs uh, that staff believes are, are going to be necessary to carry us into, into the next 15 years and realize some of the goals in the comprehensive plan. But again, back to the six-year uh, plan notion, the mayor talked a, a, a bit about uh, looking out six years into the future, and this takes both an operations and a capital component. And the first element uh, that this budget immediately begins to address is addressing and maintaining service levels and addressing some of the catching up, some of the, the need uh, in the maintenance area. That was certainly a key theme. And uh, there's some elements uh, that the mayor's recommending uh, address that from a revenue standpoint. And, uh, and we'll need to be uh, doing this on a biennial basis. This is just going to stay in front of us, and we're going to need to continue to focus on that. And in addition to the operations, there's capital. And initially, we're focusing on catching up. So you can see the, with the uh, chart here, the, the focus of the shading is in the early years going forward, whereas keeping up, uh, the shading moves a bit to the right. Catching up, uh, we're going to be able to address some of those issues with the proposed budget, but the mayor mentioned the six-year property tax levy notion that we want to pursue with the council going forward and, and start that conversation. Uh, there's a lot of work that's been done about um, the framework for that, but not a lot of work that's been done about the content because uh, we certainly wanted to get the council involved in that early discussion very early on. Keeping up is going to rely on that six-year levy as well. As, as we said, both it's going to have both an operating and a, and a capital component, at least in terms of the way we framed it. And then to be able to step up, as the mayor said, really is going to require uh, an excess voted bond levy. And, and again, we're looking later into the six-year window uh, to be able to address that. So specifically, the, again, the mayor touched on some of the uh, elements of the revenue aspect of this, and here are some numbers that kind of match with some of the uh, change, rate changes that, that the mayor discussed a little earlier on, just to kind of fill that in. Again, the budget elaborates on this some as well, and I'm sure we'll spend some time talking about it in a couple of weeks. Uh, on the utility side, uh, both uh, in terms of 15 and 16, we have similar proposed increases, 3% in water, 2% in wastewater, and then there are the Novelty Hill rate increases that are proposed in this budget as well. The mayor used this slide to talk about the effect of these changes on the uh, price of government, and uh, I won't belabor that point. Um, he also uh, talked a bit about what the forecasted gap was. Um, so this was the forecast, as you recall, for most, much of the conversations we've had over the last year, we've talked about the same $4.2 million. In fact, as you recall, we talked uh, in July that while the number remained the same, that some of the dynamics around it changed. Uh, so the number remained the same, and that was the, the challenge we uh, met when we uh, set about putting this budget together. But when we asked folks to uh, prepare their offers to address the needs that they felt existed, that, that gap grew. Uh, when we totaled the offers and compared them to the revenues, that gap, that gap became $10 million. And, and so when we went to balance the budget, we really were, were balancing uh, a $10 million disparity uh, over, the, over the two years of the biennium. 
uh, again, just continue to walk through the materials that you'll uh, have in front of you that you'll spend some time with here in the next few weeks. Uh, next, we address accountability. Uh, the mayor mentioned uh, that we've leveraged this notion of logic models that we've spent some time with the council kind of walking through and, and validating that this does help us make progress on accountability and, and performance. Uh, each uh, budget offer will have a logic model associated with it in your book. Um, and uh, each logic model will have data. Uh, you can see in this illustration in the lower right-hand corner uh, what a typical uh, example would, would look like. And so each offer will have uh, this component. So uh, again, we, we felt like not only did this help add uh, and represent progress in our uh, accountability for performance, but it also really helped uh, shape some of the thinking that went into uh, what is a, uh, within the context of a logic model, what's a logical offer. And again, we'll. We'll be able to talk more about that as we get into the workshops. Some of the highlights from the capital projects list uh, are illustrated here for you. Some, trans some significant transportation projects um, that we want to uh, complete. And, uh, and then we move on to some uh, park and trail projects that are in the middle of this list. And, and then lastly, some of the facility needs that the, that the mayor mentioned and, and the system needs that uh, the budget will address. Uh, in the utilities, we have several projects that are pretty significant as well. Now, these are the highlights, and, and obviously, as I said, the capital plan is a pretty significant part of the budget, and, uh, and we'll be drilling down into, into a lot more than, detail than this, but uh, in terms of takeaways for projects that are included in the budget, the, these are the highlights. A different view on the uh, employee count comparison, the mayor showed a couple of views of, of the uh, employee head count. The green line here over time represents the, uh, the nominal number, the total number of employees uh, over time, and the, the um, legend for that is on the left, so you can see that it started about 550 and grew uh, almost to 700 and is since back to um, uh, slightly above 650. The, uh, the blue dashed line represents total employees per capita. You see this illustration in lots of other uh, neighboring budgets. And so just as a point of reference, um, just give you a sense of, of the productivity uh, of the workforce as our community continues to grow. So the, uh, the budget will provide highlights, uh, in, again, in the introductory section of the changes that you'll see within the context of each of the priority areas um, so, so that uh, you, know, you don't have to try and remember what was and pick out what's proposed and what are those changes. We, we call them out for you on a priority by priority basis, again, in the uh, highlight section of the budget. We, uh, we do a bit of a deeper dive on the price of government. Uh, we take a, a look at the major revenues and expenditures, talk about the assumptions we use. Again, we are using lots of numbers and trends and illustrations, and all of those are based on assumptions. And, um, and so uh, we provide insights into those assumptions uh, in the discussion around major revenues and major expenditures. And, um, and again, we talk uh, about the capital investment program itself in terms of some of the anticipated revenues that support the, the uh, proposed and recommended projects. So uh, next steps uh, are, you know, you'll, you'll be uh, becoming as familiar with uh, this work product as we have been uh, become, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and there'll be some opportunities for the public to come and continue to express uh, their thoughts and, and sentiments. As the mayor said, we're really pleased uh, with the amount of involvement that we've already benefited from uh, in uh, various forms uh, with respect to the community. But there will be two more opportunities on October 21 and, and again on uh, November 18. Uh, the first council workshop will be on the 28th of October, so that first public hearing will be the, before the council has, uh, has had uh, its, begun its work on, on the budget. So it will be an opportunity to hear from the public uh, even before you begin your own discussions. And again, I also want to thank the folks that have been involved. I mean, I feel uh, that this is, in my experience, and I've been doing this for a while, uh, the best uh, work product that, uh, that we've put together in, in, in many respects. And certainly one of those is it's certainly, it's involved the most um, uh, broadest base of people, I guess, if you will. A lot of community involvement, we talked about that. The council, you've already worked hard on many of these elements that, that we're now feeding back to you over the course of the last year. Uh, we've had great uh, support from the staff. The department uh, director team has been uh, excellent to work with, and, uh, and then their key staff have, have uh, really con contributed to the quality of the work product as well. Uh, of course, the budget team is, is here, and, and, and they always do great work, and, and Melissa Files, of course, has got her fingerprints all over this. 
Um, and uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's been done well, and, uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to work with people who take the, this work so seriously. And with that, Mayor, I'll turn it back to you. Mr. Stone. Well, I want to say thank you to the mayor and staff for uh, preparing our version. I guess this is the boys and ladies on the council instead of the boys in the boat. We can't read that anymore. So we have a budget to read over the next couple of weeks. And um, the other thing I'd like to recognize is to touch on what Mr. Bailey said. Um, I, one of the things when we go out and meet regionally with other cities, we are kind of the envy of how we do budgeting here. There, I, I can't, I'm sure we'll go down the pick and we'll meet other, with the public issues committee meeting of this uh, Sound Cities Association. And they will be on us asking us, how do you do your budget? And um, I just want people to know that we're pretty much the envy of the region and how we get this done. So um, it is a, it's a lot of reading. Um, all your council members will be doing this. And what we tried to do with this arrangement is spread that reading out in a logical fashion. And when you look at this schedule that's up here, um, we're gonna break it down into a, a number of meetings. We'll, we will start our Thursday meeting schedule. I know everybody loves that. Um, so you, you can see how we've uh, broke this down. That means you don't have to read it all in one night. You can read prior to the sections where things come in. We've also worked with staff to um, organize the budget so that we don't have to do a lot of flipping back and forth with pages. So uh, when we come to our sessions, it'll be hopefully just a straight flip through, through the budget. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is um, I know citizens like to be involved in this. When, when citizens look at the budget, I, I think it can be somewhat intimidating um, that's why I would encourage you to look at our uh, your city your choice be because some of the data we need to handle a budget from the citizens are really understanding priorities now if you want to read through the detail of the budget and tell us about a particular budget offer that we should work on that's great but when we have our public hearings something as simple as somebody coming in saying I think you should spend more money on roads or I think you should spend more money on parks really helps us want understand what the public wants. So don't be afraid to come down at the public hearings and let the council know and the mayor uh, know what you think the city should be prioritizing uh, their budgets on. So uh, we're gonna work right up to Thanksgiving, hopefully, and be done by then and be able to uh, sign off on a budget in the first week of December if everything goes well. So with that, I think we're ready to go and start our work. Um, got a couple weeks here to think about it and then we're into it so with that any <coughs> questions mr. Myers um, do we have soft copy of this do we have this in any sort of form either on a CD or or a massive workbook because I'm assuming that some sort of massive workbook uh, was created in order to be able to sum and compare all of these numbers uh, this is my fourth budget and I have spent the previous three budget periods um, entering data into uh, spreadsheets, making comparisons and things of that nature. So can we get this in soft copy? And so as, oh, as is the case every year, we will uh, have the budget on our website so anybody that wants to see it can see it. You can see all the past ones. You, you can, you know, spend lots of time with it. We also will provide, as we have in past, each of the past budgets, the council spreadsheets of all the gory details. Not that that's what, you know, it's not, the spreadsheets don't represent policy, but they represent gory details, and some people like to play with those. So we'll send those out to you in the morning. Thank and, you. And, and I'd be happy to help anybody, because I've worked with those in the past. If you don't know how to use pivot tables in Excel, come and see me, and I will help you tumble and roll the numbers around, because it allows you to look at different items that we budget across. So like, you know, when you see the, the small tools category or labor, I can show you how to do that if you need any assistance on that. So. Um, will make it as easy to digest and slice and dice and analyze as possible. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stillen. Moving on then is Ombuds Report. <laughs> 